All right, welcome to the A-level physics practical, discharging a capacitor. Now, the first thing you need to remember is that the time constant for capacitor-resistor combo is equal to RC, and that is the time it takes for the capacitor PD to reduce to 37% of its original value. So we want to choose a combination of RC that gives us a fairly big time constant. Now, a fairly standard capacitor that you get is 2200 microfarads. So that's 2.2 times 10 to the minus three farads. Yeah, I know that's 2.2 millifarads, but it's microfarads that capacitances are usually given in. So if you have this capacitance, then we want a resistor of the order times 10 to the five ohms. If that's the case, if it's one times 10 to the five, then in our case, the time constant will be 2.2 times 10 to the minus three times 10 to the five. And so that ends up just being 2.2 times 10 to the two or 220 seconds. And that's pretty good. That allows us to record the PD across a capacitor that's discharging every 10 seconds for, you know, a few readings. We don't need to go all the way down to 37%. Even if this is times 10 to the four, we end up with a time constant of just 22 seconds. That's too short to do really anything with. So when I do this with my students, I actually give them a capacitor of unknown capacitance and then they have to have a play around to figure out which resistor is gonna be best to give them a good time constant, and then they do the experiment. So the circuit is gonna look something like this. We have our battery or our cell. That's gonna be connected directly to our capacitor. We want it to charge very, very quickly like that so we can just close it. But then we're gonna have the capacitor then in its own circuit with a resistor. That's our capacitor. That's our resistor. And then we want a voltmeter across the capacitor. We can just put it straight across the circuit like that. So we're gonna charge the capacitor using, for example, six volt battery, then discharge it through known resistor. We're going to use preferably an analog voltmeter. And what will happen is that the needle will deflect and then it will start coming back down because the PD will be decreasing across the capacitor. The problem with digital voltmeters in this case is that they're not constantly updating. It's only every second or so that the numbers update. And we're going to start a stop clock at chosen V0. That's our initial PD. Now you can choose a number that's gonna be the same every time if you want to. You can start discharging it. You don't need to start your stop clock as soon as you start discharging it. You can start discharging it and then start your stop clock when the PD reaches five volts, for instance. It doesn't make a difference. The only difference is, is that if you choose the same initial PD, then that allows you to draw a different type of graph as well. And again, there's two ways that we can do it. Either we can say every 10 seconds, we're going to record the PD, or we can say every volt, we wanna see what the time is. The former is the better though. We're going to record the PD across the capacitor every 10 seconds. And it's up to you how long you do it for. But let's say you go to 100 seconds. We're gonna repeat it three times and find the mean. Your uncertainty in the mean is going to be half the range. That's something you can talk about when you do your analysis. Now, our equation for capacitor discharge is this, V over V0 is equal to E to the minus T over RC. So we can see that the PD at any point is not proportional to time because of the exponential. So what we need to do is take logs of both sides and we log the E, so we just end up with that. If you know your log identities, you know that log of something over something else is equal to the log of one take away the log of the other. And so just putting log V0 over the other side, we end up with this log of V is equal to minus T over RC plus log of V0. That is the equation that we're gonna be working with. And so we can see that this gives us a straight line graph. Log of V0 can be on a Y axis. Yes, I can say log. Some people say LUN, but it is just a log. It's just not base 10. And that gives us MX where time is our X. And we can see what our gradient is gonna be as well. And so log of V0 is gonna be our Y intercept. So if we draw a graph of our results and you do need to calculate the log of V and V0 for all your results, then we're gonna end up with a straight line. However, we can see that we have a minus in this. So we're gonna have a minus gradient. And so our graph is actually going to look like that. This here is our Y intercept. That is log V0, which makes sense. And so what's the gradient of this line gonna be? Well, we can see that we're left over with minus one over RC. 
if t is on the x-axis. So then you can calculate the capacitance from the gradient. So just swapping these two around, c is going to be equal to, well, our gradient is going to be minus, so it doesn't actually matter too much. We can just get rid of the minus. It's going to be 1 over the resistance times the gradient. And naturally, as per usual, we can compare with actual value. Capacitors usually have a tolerance, so they'll give you a number, but then they'll give you an uncertainty of their own. So you can see whether your value fits inside that. We can do some uncertainties of our own. Yeah, there might be a small uncertainty in the time, but when it comes to our analog voltmeter, there's always going to be a fairly hefty uncertainty in that because we're going to be unsure as to which line the needle is going to be closer to. So we do want to add error bars to our log v and then we can obviously do a line of words fit as per usual and we can use that to find the uncertainty in the gradient so we can say percentage uncertainty in c is going to be equal to percentage uncertainty in the gradient and as per usual that's line of worst fit take away line of best fit over line of best fit times 100 but where do we get our uncertainties from the percentage uncertainty in every value of log v is equal to the percentage uncertainty in your initial reading of the voltage of the PD. So there you go, that's how you can find the capacitance of a capacitor by discharging it through a resistor and obtaining a graph using logs. Very briefly, there is another thing you can do. You can actually do a graph of log V over V0 and time. And you're gonna end up with a straight line graph that actually goes through the origin Okay, it might be a negative gradient, but we can just forget about the minus. And so as you can see from this halfway equation up here, we can see that the gradient is gonna be equal to one over RC. And so that's another way that you can do it. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please leave a like. If you wanna see me doing this in real life, follow the card and it'll take you to the video that I made for Marsbury Science. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. Always appreciate that from you guys. And I'll see you next time.